If you're looking to get hired as a software engineer or a web developer, here's the bare minimum that you need to do to get hired. Here's the newsflash. 70% of it has nothing to do with coding. But before I continue, I want to give you a big caveat here. If you're just watching videos on YouTube, including mine, and you're not doing the steps, means you're not taking action to actually do the things that you have to do that move this process forward, you're not going to get hired at all. And so what I want to do today is share with you one video that I believe has everything you need to do in order to make sure you get hired. And how do I know this is because majority of the steps is what I followed in order to get my first job. And I'm kind of really excited to see that somebody created this video so I don't have to tell you this every time. I could just say, go watch this video and then ask you, did you do these steps? And if you say no, then I'll be like, then go, go watch the video again and do those steps again. You can find this video at the Free Code Camp YouTube channel. It's literally this one, how to get a job as a developer. If you take a look at this video, and I already watched it, I'm going to tell you 100% that if you follow all the steps that are outlined here, you're going to be well on your way. So if you're wondering why you should listen to me, I want to give you some context if you're new to this channel. I used to teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as my main career. And at 35, I decided that I need to switch careers due to injuries. So I started to learn to code. It took me forever, but by 39, I got hired as a software engineer and I've been working in the industry for almost five years. I'm 43 now, going to be 44. Jesus Christ. But anyway, if I could do it, that means you can do it, but it's not going to be easy. And I want to kind of put this in your mind that it's not the next YouTube video. It's having a plan and it's executing on that plan. And so there's thousands of videos online that you could watch, including this one. But that doesn't mean that they're going to get you to where you want. And I want to put a real face to a strategy that you could borrow from Free Code Camp that is going to help you. And you don't have to listen to me as a random dude, but I just want to show you that a random dude like me got to where he is by following a very similar strategy. And I bet if I did the things that they talk about in that video, I would have got there faster. Outside of your studying and improving your skills, the first part of your job search strategy is having an online presence. For instance, people need to know you exist and are looking for a job, even if you're just starting out. So here are the bare minimum things you need to set up like right now, today. And the first two you 100% need to have. The first one is making sure that you have a good GitHub profile. And even if it does not have enough green, even if you don't have any projects, and if I say good, I meant have a GitHub profile, just start it. It should have your real name, the technologies that you're interested in, so people know what you're doing. And you might have a bunch of greens here, but one thing I want to show you, don't worry if you don't, it comes with time. And I want to show you that I started this GitHub profile in 2013. Notice how lazy I was, didn't apply myself until maybe 2018, 2018. 19 and then after 2019 i started taking things more seriously and now we're in today 2024 and if you do have projects that you want to showcase as part of your portfolio you could have him here as pin projects and again this comes with time and all of these items that you see here they're not part of any tutorial that i did these are projects that i created myself and the one that i'm really really proud of is this strappy nextjs corporate starter which got a lot of stars and not because I built it, but because we're using Strapi and people love Strapi, people love Next.js, but you want to showcase your best projects that you have. But in short, when you're starting out, you might not have these cool projects. Don't worry about it. Next thing you need to have is to make sure that you have a LinkedIn profile. Your LinkedIn profile, again, should be your real name, should have your address where you live, where you're trying to get a job. And I'll talk more about why I live in Austin, Texas. Uh, more on that later, but it should have some basic keywords of the things that you do and some of the things that you want to learn. Even if you don't have a job yet, just add the technologies that you're learning here so at least you're starting to become searchable. And when you're starting out, you might not have the experience to put here. For instance, if you take a look in my experience section, you could see that the last one, two, three, four, five jobs been developer focused. But if we expand this and take a look when I started, a lot of my jobs initially that I had here was my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school that I owned nine, uh, for nine years and five months when I sold insurance. Then I started to kind of slowly break into the industry with some internships and 
and basic opportunities that I had until finally I was able to get my last few rolls. So no worries if this section is not complete because it happens over time. As long as you have a home for yourself where you could start building this online presence. And finally, you should have a portfolio site. And when I say portfolio site, don't think about it. It's something that you build yourself. Think of it as another business card. For instance, buyyourname.com, like paulbaslavsky.com is a website. So when someone Googles me, this is what comes up. They have the LinkedIn link. They have the GitHub. They have my YouTube channel. You don't need to start a YouTube channel, whatever, but you could have a brief about section. And again, here I kind of put a little bit about myself, my basic information. So people contact me. That phone number is different now. So don't try calling. And I put the skills here and I made this portfolio a while ago before I even was really good at these skills. I was still learning, but I put them here because these were the skills that I wanted to have. And by the way, you don't need Redux. You don't need to learn GraphQL at this point. APIs are fine. All that stuff was good. But anyway, so when I was learning, I actually used this as a roadmap. And then you would have your resume and your resume might not have any experience. And what you could do here is in your resume, and I'll talk a little bit more about, is share the projects that you've been building and talk about them as part of your experience in your resume, which is perfectly fine to do. And you should have a little contact just in case if someone wanna contact you so you could talk to them. But in terms of the bare minimum, you need to have a GitHub and you need to have a LinkedIn so you could start building your online presence. So now let's talk about our resume. Your resume is going to be a living document, meaning when you're first starting out, it might not be that exciting or something that you would even feel comfortable sharing. But the two things that you wanna make sure that you do, number one, that it looks presentable and professional. And number two, if you're building projects, mention them in your resume as if they are your experience. And I'll briefly mention what I mean by that. But let's take a look at this resume and tell me if it looks good. And again, don't have to read it. Don't worry about it. And then look at this resume. Which one looks better? Which one looks more professional? And which one is much easier to read to get a nice glance of what I'm all about? Is it is it A or is it B? So lesson number one, you want to not go too crazy, but you want your resume to be easily read, not too confusing. Someone should be able to skim it within two to three seconds and get a good idea of what you want. Now, the one point that I'm gonna share here, if you don't have any experience working, what you could do for experience, instead of saying the company that you worked for, you could say the project that you built and you could place the timeline, how long it took you to build it. And then you could say what you did in that project as key points. And then you could actually share that project in your interview and talk about it. And that's all I'm gonna talk about resumes. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below. Definitely watch the full video on free code camp and if you need extra help i'll link a video here from a live that i did a long time ago talking about how to write a resume based off the projects that you're building out of all these items i want to talk about the last two that i found to be the most important and the number one for me is networking not my applying not my resume not my interviewing not my github but this idea of networking was the big thing that helped me land majority of my roles a lot of the jobs i got is because i made friends with someone who was able to give me a referral to their company to get that interview. Obviously, I had to pass the interview, but that's what led to me getting hired. And I want to show you the power of networking. So if you're not networking, and it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but the one thing that I would say everybody should do is go to meetups. And when you go to meetups, don't just be like, here's my name, give me a job, give me a job, give me No, you go to a meetup and you see what kind of value you provide. A lot of meetups, they love to have people talk. Even if you're the beginner, they just want to hear someone share a story about cool technologies. So when I first discovered Remix and started learning Remix, I knew nothing about it. So I was like, let me go to my local meetup and hear other people talk about Remix so I could learn a few things. And through that process, I started making friends. I made friends with Brooks who ran the meetup. And I think on the second time I showed up, I said, hey, are you looking for any speakers? I would love to talk about my journey of learning Remix. And I said, to him, I'm not an expert. I don't even know what I'm doing, but I will research the topic and I would like to present. He said, you know what? Sure, let's do it. And that led to my first talk, which I gave. And sometimes these talks are recorded, which is awesome because you could share them on your resume. When you're applying to a job, you could be like, hey, I gave a talk about this technology, even if it's a small meetup, like this Remix Austin meetup example. And I did this a year ago. This little talk led 
to huge opportunities for me. After hearing my talks, he's like, you know, Paul really loves Remix. He's really passionate. He has a good story to tell. You know what? I think he would be a good fit to MC an event. And he actually recommended me to be a, a, an MC for a Remix comp. And so in 2022, I didn't give a talk there, but I had my face on their website and I was one of the MCs that kind of introduce the guest and that's a new door that opened. What's cool about this is because now people like Paul Basowski, he kind of likes Remix, he kind of knows what's up, he, he's in the community and that led one thing to another and I was able to give a big talk at a Remix conference. Not only is it recorded, it was a pretty big conference and what's awesome, this is another thing I could use on my resume. And so if you take a look, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, look, they had Dan Abramov, who I'm nowhere near, like I, I'm, I think I was like a secret agent imposter because somehow I ended up being there, giving a talk, Paul Basowski, my name, you know what, I'll take this win. But all kidding aside, networking is huge. I made so many connections and by the way, Brooke uh, also gave a talk and he was the one who runs the Austin Remix. What's awesome here, actually, this is a great example. Prior to Brooks uh, switching roles and starting to work at Remix, he worked at a different company and through his connections, through his experience, through his networking, he actually now works for the Remix team, which is pretty cool. And this is the point that I want to say. The power of networking is huge. I cannot underestimate. A lot of times it's who you know and who could refer you to their friends. Like majority of my jobs I got through either a connection I made through networking or connection I made through networking from my first job, from my second job, from my third job and now working at Strappy all came from networking and this is why I can't stress it enough. Did I say how important networking is? It really is important. And the last thing that I want to talk before I end this video is this idea of relocation because the truth is sometimes you might, and this is pre-pandemic, and you might live in the area where there's not that much opportunity. And by the way, trying to find your first remote work, even today as a junior developer is really hard. You have better bet of getting your first role in an actual company. So I moved from Connecticut, which number one, did not have that much opportunity. Even though Connecticut is between Boston and New York, I felt like even though New York or Boston will have more opportunity, at that time it was way more expensive to live in those cities. So I actually relocated to Austin, Texas. I live slightly outside of Austin in this area called Deander because I had more job opportunities and I would physically go to places and apply directly at the companies. So I didn't use LinkedIn or Glassdoor. I literally asked my friends where they work, where should I apply? And I would reach out to those companies directly. And so between networking and possibly considering relocating and not being afraid to be like, hey, my first job, I it doesn't have to be remote. And to be honest, when I physically had to show up at a place and working alongside with people, it was really nice because you get this great feeling of having a mentor at your job because all you have to do is just look to your left and your right, see the person the next to be like, hey, how do you do this? Help me with this. And so it's an amazing learning experience. From all the things that I shared, if there was a one takeaway, first thing you need to do is build your online presence. Number one, have your LinkedIn, have your GitHub, set up a basic portfolio site. And you're doing this all alongside while you're learning your skill. And then outside of, you know, writing your resume, thinking of how to apply your job, you should always network because that's something that takes time. And when you're networking, you don't go there to be like, what can they do for me? It's what can I do for you? And once you do a lot of good things, people are going to be like, hey, Paul's kind of cool. He's always helping out. If there's an opportunity, I'll let him know first. And finally, sometimes you might have to relocate because you might want to go to a city which has more job opportunities. And remember, as a junior developer, trying to get your first remote job might be difficult. So if you want to increase your chances, directly apply to companies that have those jobs. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and watch the whole how to get a dev job from Free Code Camp, the tips that they give there, and I'm not gonna give them all here. I just wanted to share my story and the things that I did that they mentioned here that actually worked for me, just to let you know, hey, this stuff works. It's not the next video, but it's actually listening to what people are recommending and going through the action of doing those things. If you like what I do here on this channel, feel free to subscribe or like. I don't make a living on YouTube. I make a living working at my job. So I do this just for fun to share with others, you know, the non-hype, the non-clickbait videos about like nonsense that people tell you, there's no jobs or there's like, or it's too easy. No, it 
this field is very difficult, but the reward is amazing if you stick with it. So with that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.